All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Sit Down. And I am joined by a very good friend of mine, Peter Lajacano. Peter is the president of the Italian American Federation of Buffalo. And I'm super excited to have you on the show. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Let me make sure this. It's a pleasure. That I'm, I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. I, I'm trying to focus more on the Buffalo area. And I want, we're in talks with Step Out Buffalo and everything. And I want to do more Buffalo community stuff because there's no other Italian, like social media Italian page in Western New York other than the Wooden Spoon that I know of at least. And mm -hmm. I thought who better to come and talk about Buffalo than you. You know so much about the history of the Italian Americans in Buffalo, Buffalo in general. And you were the first person that came to mind. Well, thank you for thinking of me. I, I don't want to say that I'm some kind of a great expert. I just I know a lot, but um, I can. I'm always learning more too. <laughs> so sure. um, I'd love to talk to you about the the history of the Italians in Buffalo. Yeah, let's get into you a little bit first. Like, what are your sure. parents from? Like, sure. Generation Italian. I'll American? be glad to tell you. Um, my family originally came from Valedolmo, Sicily. Okay. So it's in the province, Provincia Palermo, outside of Palermo, and my family has deep roots in Buffalo. Deep roots in that um, my great grandparents came here. And some came as early as uh, the early 1890s, some came in the later 1890s, um, but basically all from Valedolmo and um, in that area within the province uh, of Palermo itself. And they settled in on my father's side, the lower west side of Buffalo, which was Buffalo's biggest little Italy, predominantly Sicilian. And on my mother's side, they actually settled in both Leroy, which is near Batavia yep. and Fredonia which is oh, cool. in our South towns. Mm -hmm. So um, in, they were into agriculture and farming. And so they had, you know, farms, particularly in Fredonia and, and uh, that, was, that was their background. So the roots run rather deep, but um, being that both my parents were kind of from the same town, their families, mm -hmm. um, I always um, had a strong connection to not only my Italian culture, I was always also raised by grandparents who um, kind of gave me that um, connection, maybe even closer uh, because my parents were, you know, well, they were divorced, but they were, you know, um, working and so on. Mm -hmm. So we always had grandparents living with us or us living with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. And I love the multi-generational household. Yeah, that was, that was like a big part of like me growing up too, because I lived with my Nona for many, many years too. And it's just like, I don't know, it makes you more closer and it just like then you could like really hear about I love hearing old I loved hearing old stories sure. too, about from Italy like what it was like back in the day and that's where I learned my Sicilian from mm -hmm. and and from my grandmother in particular on my mother's side and then you know after that I, I loved the language so much that I wanted to I wanted to move to Italy I wanted to live mm -hmm. in Italy I wanted to you know but uh, I was able to study there and go there and of course I became an Italian teacher mm -hmm. so that fit like a glove and <laughs> that's been a wonderful experience. I did live in Italy for a, a period of time. And um, did you live in Sicily? Or? Uh, in the summertime, I lived in Siena is when I, I did the exchange program for through Buffalo State College actually. Very cool. And it was in Siena, it was amazing. Um, and then in the summer we spent in Sicily and that was amazing. Um, and I have relatives there in our hometown of Valedomo that we keep in touch with. So, and I have friends throughout all of Italy and we actually established a sister city with a town in Puglia uh, called Torre Maggiore. That was through my job at school. My students um, actually got that rolling mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it was just happenstance. It was a wonderful thing how it all kind of fell into play. And they've been our sister city since about 2000 two or three in with so buffalo cool. so cool so you guys like in the high school they like exchange there's like exchange we had ex we had exchanges going on um they came here every year we sent some kids there it was hard we it was also through um 9 11 it happened in 2001 right so after that they were not doing international trips for a while mm -hmm. And then they started up again somewhat later. Their kids were coming here. We sent some there. Um, they got more money from their area to be able to sponsor that. And we yeah. don't have that support <laughs> quite. So especially from, you know, our, um, we weren't from a rich private school. I, mean, I teach at Hutch Tech High School, mm -hmm. which is a Buffalo public school, the best, I would say. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit prejudiced about that, but it's a wonderful school. And uh, so it's been a wonderful th thing. I would have liked to have gone there more frequently and sent more kids there, but 
now, of course, COVID has put a stop on a lot of things yeah. too. So hopefully that's going to change. I know. I can't wait to go. I still have never been to Italy. I hear so many stories. I, my mom hasn't been, I think she said since she was 19, but she keeps telling me how she went every year in high school and like talks it up. So yeah, you will, you're, you're not going to want to come back. <laughs> I know. I, I keep saying that because then I see these sites like my cheap dream home and your Italian dream home. And it's like, okay, I could go buy a house, a beautiful house, like close to the beach in Italy for a hundred thousand dollars when, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> why would you even live here? <laughs> yeah, right. You be careful with some of those homes. I like for, yeah, for I one euro, you know, I have a friend who did one of those things Oh, you did? and now she has spent like about 200,000 euro oh, just oh trying God. to make it, you know, really nice. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, buyer beware. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think cause there's like a bunch of Instagram pages though. It shows you like houses that are like already done, like out of that area. Cause some of those aren't in the yeah. nicest, nicest of areas. And if you're not going to be there to actually do the work or have the work done for you with you watching, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably, you know. know. Not, who knows? Maybe one day. But um, and now you're also president of the Italian Federation. So when did you yeah. start getting involved in like the Italian clubs and the Italian sure. federations? Um, <clears throat> well, let's see. I'm going to say it was probably around the, I was always you know, doing Italian things, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I never missed a festival. I never, I always went to the Italian mass, St. Anthony's church um, and, and all of that. But I'm gonna say as far as more community involved, probably happened around late nineties, early 2000s. Okay. And so um, I started with the Italian Federation, which led me into the Italian festival and then all of the other Italian groups that I belong to as well. The Federation, um, Federation of Italian American Societies of Western New York, established 1907. I became president, I think it was 2009, maybe. 2009, I think oh, so it was. So you've been president for well over a decade then. Yes, I have. It's been a long time and, um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> we'll, uh, it's been a wonderful experience. Yeah. It's been a wonderful experience. It's a big job. It's not something that I take very lightly. I take it very seriously. And there's a lot of work to be done. And so, um, but with the Federation, basically we're the umbrella organization for the other Italian American groups that, and associations that want to be under our umbrella. Mm -hmm. um, and we have about 30 that belong to the Federation within the, our area, mm -hmm. within Western New York. And we get together once a month and we promote each other's events and activities. Mm -hmm. And we always say, l'unione fa la forza, you know, in union there is, in unity there is strength. Mm -hmm. So coming together and helping each other to, to uh, promote the Italian cause is what we're there for. Awesome. And we've had to defend it a lot as well. Of course. I mean, I'll, I'm sure that's what many organizations could. Sure. Um, maybe I'm sure they have faced all the same struggles. But you said 1907 was. Is when it began. But there, you know, back then it was very different. The world, this world, even around us here in Western New York or in America, in the big cities as well, Italians uh, had it pretty rough, you know, mm -hmm. had it very rough. Here in Buffalo, they were, they were not supposed to cross Main Street. They were, um, there were lots of fights and lots of, you know, uh, with the, they were always, you know, the, the new immigrants that come into the area are the ones that get treated the poorest, the, mm -hmm. you know, and so at that time, it was the Italians and so this and, is like the late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah, I would say, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s is basically when the largest numbers came. Mm -hmm. And Buffalo's connection to Italians actually goes back to the inception of Buffalo with the uh, Holland Land Company and Joseph Ellicott who, when he wanted somebody to lay out the streets for the grid for the city of Buffalo, mm -hmm. and they hired uh, Paolo Busti. Paolo Busti was born in Milano, and I believe he was in Philadelphia at the time. Okay. And they sent him probably a map of some sort and said, this is a city we want to make, uh, at, you know, <laughs> at not the Niagara River and uh, here in Western New York. And so what can you do? Lay out the map. And so he created the grid for the streets, which still exists today. So cool. um, and that's, that is pretty cool. That's and a Buffalo so, fun fact for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Our streets were laid out. And when I say that I'm talking about, basically you're talking about downtown, mm -hmm. you're talking about probably no farther North than Chippewa street at the time. Yeah. But then okay. we saw the map. I'll probably, I'll try to get, we'll go back down so I can get a picture. So everybody like listening or watching could see it, but um, yeah. it like already includes Niagara square and sure. everything's laid out. And that was done by an Italian. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, we're very happy about that. And 
So, um, but as far as the majority of our, our immigrants, they came late 1800s, early 1900s. And we had several little Italy's, little Italy's in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the Lower West Side. We were, this was the largest Little Italy. And our home base is St. Anthony's Church, mm -hmm. which- Which we're actually filming in right now. I don't think we mentioned that. We're, yeah, in, we're in the historic St. Anthony's I'm Church. I'm so happy to be here. This is like, you know, our home. Mm -hmm. Now, St. Um, Anthony's, for the, like, it's one of the oldest churches or one of, the, is it the oldest in Buffalo or? I, I don't know. It's not the oldest church oh. in Buffalo, but it's it's the Italian mother church okay. of Buffalo. And it's, uh, we was, it was founded in 1891. Um, and we still have an Italian mass going on here to, uh, right to this day, Sundays, 11 a.m. Uh, but we're special, we're unique, not only for that, but we've had um, three or four saints pray in this church, including Mother Cabrini. And Mother Cabrini made her visit to St. Anthony's in the, um, I'm gonna say, I don't know, late 1890s, I have to double check mm -hmm. on that. Um, because it's documented and she, you know, for a brief time, it wasn't long, but for a brief time, she met with our Italian immigrant community here as well. Very cool. And um, so not, you know, they we're the only church in Buffalo can, that can say Mother Cambrini prayed <laughs> here. Um, so we're so proud of that. And, um, and there's still Latin mass today. There's we have the Tridentine mass, which is the Latin mass prior to Vatican II. Mm -hmm. And that happens at nine o'clock on Sundays. And then there are other times for that mass, I believe as well. Very large community comes in for that. They come from all over Western New York, just like we come from all over Western New York here uh, for our Italian mass. Mm -hmm. Because the neighborhood, which would, this was all tenements and all of that around here, which doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So we, we pull in from everywhere. And then we have an English mass, which is actually going on right now yeah. <laughs> right on now Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So um, when, why did you really learn all this information just kind of just over the years being involved? And yeah, it's you, you learned, I guess, over, <laughs> over the years, um, being I a part it. of it. Mm -hmm. It's the, you know, when I walk into the church, it's like the walls talk. Okay. Because it's like, you know, there's so much history there. And it's so many people and my whole family is roots there at St. Anthony's. Um, and and it's just like it's home mm -hmm. and especially in the italian mass everybody knows everybody and if you miss one week it's like oh where were you are you okay <laughs> you know and um it's it's just it's our home it's our home away from home mm -hmm. and then the italian festival was actually mm -hmm. based off the festival from saint anthony's church yeah we had really it was saint anthony's lawn fade which was really back in the 20s, okay? So we've almost had 100 years of Buffalo Italian festival. Basically, I mean, they've moved to different locations as we know, <laughs> um, but still the original really came from here. It wasn't called the Italian festival then, it was St. Anthony's Lawn Fade, basically La Festa, La Festa di San Antonio maybe. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was here, it was right in the grounds, you know? Uh, and then from there it had moved to Connecticut Street, um, which was a little Italy neighborhood at the time, which is, you know, part of the maybe a little bit more Upper West Side mm -hmm. of Buffalo up Niagara Street. And then it moved to Hurdle Avenue. And then for a brief time, we were at the waterfront, we were in Niagara Square. Being in Niagara Square is really nice because we're right by St. Anthony's right. again. Mm -hmm. We get to do and our one procession. Of the, yeah, I was going to say one of my favorite parts was the procession throughout Niagara Square from yeah. St. Anthony's. But. Carrying the statue around Niagara Square again and up Delaware and back. That was uh, my highlight too. I love that. For sure. <laughs> so what kind of, I guess for those who don't know, like what kind of goes into like running, I guess, I guess we'll start with like the Federation. Like what are like some of the tasks or or I guess what are some of the benefits of even joining the Italian Federation? Because mm -hmm. I mean, I come to the uh, mm -hmm. meetings when I can, and it mm -hmm. seems like I'm the youngest person there by mm -hmm. like 20 years. <laughs> sometimes sometime. we want to change that. Yes. <laughs> we want to change that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been like, I push like my audience. I know we have a young audience sometimes, and I actually. I mentioned it on the one podcast about like joining your local Italian federations and I actually had like a couple of kids like reach out to me like in their like late teens early 20s like oh where do I go to do all this I go just go awesome. just google it that's awesome we're always looking for new members and young mm -hmm. members in particular um because we want to pass on all of the wonderful traditions it's it's a family mm -hmm. it's a federation family I feel all of our groups there again we we come together to break bread and have this wonderful meal, but we do it once a month, but we're there to support each other. And so we're there in the good, the bad, the we're there for, for everyone. And we try to be there for everyone. Um, we have issues that we're working with. Obviously the Columbus issue was an issue mm -hmm. that we're, you know, we're dealing with. And you know, the one thing you have to develop is a thick skin. 
because if you're going to be a president of anything or you know leading a, a, yeah. a committee, anything, any group. you have any group, you have to have a thick skin because first of all, <laughs> try to get a community to agree on something. <laughs> Two Italians try to make agree on something. Everybody's got an opinion. Mm -hmm. We're famous for that, and I love it. That's fine. That's who we are. So I've developed a thick skin, but of course the Columbus issue was an issue that we had to face. Columbus Day. Uh, throughout the schools, also dealing with the statue of Columbus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that statue was built by the, the pennies, nickels and dimes of our, our people, of our grandparents, of our great grandparents who didn't have two nickels to rub together. Mm -hmm. And they put that in there. Columbus was chosen at the time to represent the Italian people based on, of course, the lynchings that took place in New Orleans when, yes. you know, the largest mass lynching the largest in, mass lynching. in the US um, still, and so, you know, Italians had great, um, there were a lot of horrible things going on, we'll say. And what, to, what year was about for everybody to listen? Like, that was in, eight, it, I think it was 1891. So this statue was well I, over. No, no, well, not or, that, not okay. our statue. Okay. But Columbus, um, a, after the lynchings and after that, it, it was determined that, you know, um, what are we going to do for Italians to you know, make it, I don't know if you want to say make it up to them, but give them something to be proud of after mm -hmm. all of this and whatever. And um, it was brought up that the, or, or, that um, Christopher Columbus should be, you know, he was probably the one Italian that non-Italians knew the best at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're talking about back in the time. So um, it was chosen to him as, you know, as um, to represent them on Columbus day. And so every Columbus day, it was a celebration of Italian heritage, mm -hmm. the heritage, the culture, the people, all everything, all the good. So um, obviously that's taken on a different look over the past years. But what, what we did, I believe is a move and our group believes it's a move. We owned that statue. And every year that statue was defaced. Every year that statue was put on the front page of the Buffalo News. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so with bags on its head, so, with a noose. So yeah, that's atrocious. But um, when was the statue like built or the? I, I think or... it it basically was around the early 1930s. Oh wow, is what it's I want to say, almost 100 years. Yeah, old. still around early 1930s. And so to see that happen every and where year, was it, where was it originally located? Well, that it was it had a couple different locations. Mm -hmm. One location, um, let's see, one location I believe was down here somewhere, mm -hmm. in you know in the this part of the, the lower part of downtown area. Um, and then it moved to the park where it had sat um, until last July. And it was determined that we would be proactive in not only preserving the statue for our future generations, but moving it to a location where it will be safe. Mm -hmm. And we are erecting a new statue in its place dedicated to the Italian American immigrant family, which we're very proud of. The statue will be beautiful. We're working on that now. Okay. That's exciting. And we have a new location for the new, for the statue of Columbus. And I think um, people will be very happy when they learn about that. I don't want to bring that up yet because that's not been still under wraps. Well, for now it is, but soon it will be uh, in its new location and being displayed for people to see. Sure. And whatever your take is on Columbus, it is history. And we don't want, we can't erase it, okay? We can't erase it, it's history. And for many people, he's a hero. Mm -hmm. um, and for others, he's not, but it's our history. We don't want it erased. It that has been a day that's been represented for Italians, for the Italian heritage, for all the good of the mm -hmm. Italians and so their talk, contributions. Let's talk about the, the new statue. So what's the mm -hmm. new statue going to be exactly? The new statue is of a mother, a father, and two small children um, as they are peering out over um, the new world, we'll say, or their new world, mm -hmm. we'll say. There um, could be the New York Harbor, could be the Statue of Liberty and the little boy is pointing. So cool. Um, it's really, it's a beautiful statue and I can't wait to see it come to fruition. Are there renderings on it yet? There are, there are renderings. Okay, we'll we're it. also making little maquettes where we're gonna be able to sell them in oh, fundraisers. Cool. And all of that, and so it's it's a beautiful statue. And the you know, to me, you know, heroes can come in all different shapes, sizes, colors in in any 
anything, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who's world famous. A hero could be your grandmother. Mm -hmm. A hero could be your mother, your father, you know? And, and what I particularly like about this statue is you have a woman and a man. And anybody that knows the Italian family knows that it's La Mamma, mm -hmm. who's, the, the man likes to pretend he's in charge. And on the <laughs> outside, he is in charge. But you go inside that house and you know, la mama comanda, you know, <laughs> she's in charge, really. Yes, she is. So our statue has um, those elements to it, which I think are really make it special. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was a good little segue. I'm glad we got in there. So what are some other, I guess, besides the Columbus Day issue, what are sure. some other like challenges that Italian Americans face? Or not, I guess, federations or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess tra well, in a tradition sense. You know, we're always looking at, you know, obviously the mafia is a big stereotype and, and organized crime is a big stereotype. And, and obviously there are things that come out, um, whether it's, you know, or how Italians are portrayed in the media. Mm -hmm. And we always want a positive image, you know, Absolutely. because I've, you know, we've said it before, point, 2% or less than, less that, than that, less than that uh, of Italian Americans have anything to do with organized crime. Mm -hmm. So that's another fight that we're fighting. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's a celebration being Italian. We should celebrate more. We should celebrate our heritage and our culture and we do in our faith. And um, I feel like sometimes we're very defensive and we, you know, in that, that's kind of been our role at the Federation too, defending our, our, our people um, and rightly so, but we celebrate our people mm -hmm. and we celebrate all of the good and all of the wonderful things that they have done to help us be able to be here today. And it's it's been said in many other cultures and I say it with Italians, we stand on the shoulders of those that came before us mm -hmm. and they've allowed us to be here today to live the lives we live because of the sacrifices that they made and they'll never be forgotten and always be cherished by all of us. Very, very well said, very well said. So speaking on like other like people that should be celebrated. So what are some um, fa more famous, I guess, Italian Americans like from Buffalo specifically that I guess we could dive into that. Okay. Um, I had you told me in advance, I would have I made know, a I list. Know. <laughs> all the, I get like all these questions. Yeah, like, like that's fine. That's fine. Um, I know of some, of course. We have uh, well, well, boost. <laughs> well, let's talk about maybe more today. Okay. Um, we have Mariana Esposito, or Esposito, really in Italian. Mariana Esposito has the longest running cooking show on PBS, and she does Ciao Italia. She does Ciao Italia on PBS and she is from Buffalo. <clears throat> and I think she was raised just outside in Lancaster um, uh, in the suburbs, we'll say. But she is somebody we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. Tom Fontana is from Buffalo. In the 80s, he, he did St. Elsewhere and Hill Street Blues. And he's been, um, he's a great writer and producer of, of TV shows and other things. Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett was actually, his last name was really Defilia. Mm -hmm. And he wrote A Chorus Line, the Broadway show, A Chorus okay. Line, um, and also Dream Girls. So Dream so Girls, cool. A Chorus Line, that came from Michael Bennett from Buffalo, New York. Um, we all know about the, the chicken wing, of course, and uh, at the Anchor Bar with the Bellissimo to well, let's, let's talk about, let's dive into that one a little bit for okay. people outside of the Buffalo area that are listening. Sure. It's funny because outside of the Buffalo area, they call them buffalo wings. Yeah. But we never call them buffalo wings. We call them chicken wings and we eat them with blue cheese. Yes. Which chicken is not ranch. We'll <laughs> never eat them with ranch. Not a true buffalonian would ever eat them with ranch. <laughs> um, and I, when Italians come from Italy and we have them try it, and they always say, ma blue cheese, ma che cos'è blue cheese? And it's like a gorgonzola. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like a gorgonzola, mm -hmm. similar to gorgonzola cheese. So then they understand. But um, that's a very obviously famous buffalo dish. And we're very famous also for, you know, different holidays like St. Joseph's Day in particular, coming up on March 19th, where we have, you know, a meatless buffet of these tables that have been put together and that are amazing and and one of the desserts that's so famous we call them sfinci mm -hmm. but a lot of the east coast italians call them zeppoli mm -hmm. zeppoli we call them sfinci 
and um, it's you know the it's a it's a deep fried dough which is hollow on the inside, mm -hmm. batter more than dough batter, and you put powdered sugar on it, or you could fill in with ricotta like a cannoli yeah, type. It's, filling. A, it's funny because um, my mom and I actually made it for the YouTube, the YouTube cooking it. show, and it's it's like right around this time it's like we're it's just getting a ton of views right now. I think everybody's like sure. searching it on YouTube how to make zeppoli San Giuseppe. And absolutely, absolutely. In Buffalo, there there's Fingy, and your Fingy. I don't know if it's different from a zeppole but the sphingy should be hollow inside mm -hmm. if they come out like a, a bowling ball no good no. okay they should be hollow inside and that's when you can eat them just like that or just put the ricotta and you mm -hmm. can stuff them with with that like the cannoli filling mm -hmm. so march 19th is a sacred day particularly for sicilians because of the drought from you know uh hundreds and hundreds of years ago people prayed to saint joseph and the rains came and they promised him a table every year in his honor because of that with the bounty of their harvests. And now people, since then, people have always made a promise too for St. Joseph's. Like for example, if some, I have a dear friend right now, in fact, who received um, an organ transplant mm -hmm. and his sister said, if he comes through this, I will offer, I'm doing a St. Joseph's table because I'm making that promise to St. Joseph and God. And sure enough, she's preparing now for a big feast because it's been oh, a success. That's awesome. Yes. That's a great story. Yes. And a lot of people do that with St. Joseph's day back in the forties and, and the, many mothers had kids in the war and they would offer that, you know, a St. Joseph's table to for a safe return for their kids. Uh, or if their ch children came back, their sons came back, then they would offer the table for San Giuseppe. And people, you take off a of school if it was St. Joseph's <laughs> Day too. You'd have off a of school. And then, you know, if your teacher tried to, you know, and he said, well, hey, it's our holiday, you know, <laughs> it's a San Giuseppe. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. I think my mom wants to do something for St. Joseph's Day. I think she's having, my dad's building them an altar for it and she's making nice. us cook all these different she's making each of the kids makes uh entree and then a dessert beautiful and she dared me that she doesn't think i can make shfoyadel ah shfoyadel mm -hmm. she does <laughs> that's a think... big napoletano dish mm -hmm. <laughs> she does not think i could do it for sure oh well <laughs> i bet you can you can do anything you put your mind to i know it's a lot of layers yes right <laughs> I, I, it's a lot of I layers like a preliminary google search on it <laughs> It should be it should be fun to get into it. Maybe I'll, I'll try to document it as much. Yeah, as you can. should. That'll be awesome. I know. I think somebody had like a pasta machine out, and they were just like thinning out like each of the layers. And I don't right, know, we'll get into it soon. Well, but back to the the uh, chicken wings. Who mm -hmm. initially invented the chicken wing? I don't think we actually set a name on that. Oh well, they came from the Anchor Bar, Teresa Bellissimo, mm -hmm. and her husband Frank. They own the Anchor, Anchor Bar. And one day, her one night, it was very late. Her son Dominic came in with his friends and the, everything was closed, you know, as far as the, the restaurant and that, but they went to the bar and he said, Ma, feed my friends, we're hungry, you know? Mm -hmm. So she went in the back and she threw together these wings and, and so on. And with her type of sauce, with the cut up celery and carrots and the side of blue cheese, which was all a part of it, mm -hmm. which is now our Buffalo story of where it came from, the Anchor Bar, the Bellissimo family. There has been talk of other people in Buffalo that might have done something, mm -hmm. you know, and they have their own way of doing it. Mm -hmm. But this is the way that this is how that one was invented. And that's the traditional one eaten around the country. Very cool. I think we have to do a segment on that or talk to somebody from Anchor Bar. And everybody's got their own opinion mm -hmm. as to what's the best one. Or they're better from here. They're better from there. They're, you know, everybody, you know, just like I say. Yeah, it's like Buffalo Wings, New York pizza. You're never going to make yeah. anybody agree on anything. For sure. Everybody's got their own idea. Yeah. So what's coming up, I guess, next for, I guess, like the Buffalo Federation. Mm -hmm. I, I know the Italian festival, there's <clears throat> a lot of issues because of the COVID regulations yeah, and all that. We are always planning the festival, even though we don't know under what guidelines would is that we would need to follow. Should we have it? We're always hopeful that we do have it. Cross our fingers. Um, also, we're very excited because we're looking for a June, July grand opening of our Italian Cultural Center, Centro Culturale Italiano, which will be on the corner of Hurdle and Delaware in North Buffalo, mm -hmm. which was our last Little Italy, the later Little Italy, we'll say in um, the city of Buffalo, Hurdle Avenue, which was where our Italian festival also was for many years. And uh, on that corner, we've taken a library, an old Tudor style library that was um, closed up, boarded up, 
and we got into an agreement with the city and we purchased the property and we're renovating it now. At least a million dollars has gone into wow. it. Um, and it is absolutely beautiful. It's, it will be state of the art. We're looking for that grand opening around awesome. June or July. I so will, that's huge for the Italian community of Buffalo. Sure. Well, we'll try to do something there. We definitely need to. Yes. Absolutely. We'll get some cameras and as much exposure as that. And then where could everybody, so what, I guess the next step is, so say you're a 20 something and late teen, like listening to this podcast right now, what are your, I guess, tips for them to get involved in this, into the Italian, into their Italian community? Um, <clears throat> what I would suggest is, well, first of all, all of the Italian groups and organizations really need, and I'm going to start with them instead of the kids, they really need to do um, an in-depth look at their themselves and say, okay, for example, the Federation originally, when we started in 1907, it was about helping people get in, integrate into American culture. Okay, helping them with the language, English lessons, all of this, that's not our focus anymore. Mm -hmm. All right, we don't have thousands and thousands of Italians coming into our, our, you know, our city anymore, like we did at the turn of the century, of that century. So I believe everybody needs to re-examine their focus and look and see what is it that the community needs? What do we need to do to change ourselves to fit the kids of today? You're not going to make kids join your organization if you're running dinner dances. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make your kids, the kids join an organization if you're doing, you know, I don't know, things, things that would, would be more for the elderly population, let's yeah. say, whatever that might be, okay? But whether it's a boche tournament, which has been a lot of fun for kids too, we've, we've yes. done that. Um, but whatever it is, you need to go to your, your board and, and say, okay, we need to involve the kids. What can we do? Some of the things that even at the festival, what do we do to involve kids? Well, I started grape stomping mm -hmm. and we've done grape stomping now for the past 10 years, maybe. Um, and you know that I have lines and throngs of kids wanting to grape, stomp grapes. Mm -hmm. They'd be doing it all festival long if you could. <laughs> so, I mean, just, just, I'm not saying that you need to grape stomp, okay? But what I'm saying is you really need to, for example, a lot of the, the older clubs and organizations, they're not very media savvy. Mm -hmm. They're not very technical. Te the technology is just whew, uh, past and they need to really step up with that. So have a presence on, you know, on, uh, on the internet, whether it's through not only a website or a Facebook or, uh, wh whatever you want to choose, whatever. A TikTok. Uh, a TikTok, <laughs> exactly. Whatever you want to choose, whatever works for you. But you have to really examine what the community needs are and how you're going to meet their needs because they're not going to come to you to want to be able to, oh, can I attend your dinner dance mm -hmm. so they can play the music of Frank Sinatra, which we love and, you know, everybody mm -hmm. loves. But still, you want to you want those young people because without them, it's gone. It will be gone and it's only a matter of time. So seriously, really, I think there's a lot we could do with the young people. Mm -hmm. And and get get those children and the grandchildren to come to a meeting, have a meeting with the young people of your, the children and grandchildren of the organizations. It doesn't always have to be the grandfather's the only one that comes. Mm -hmm. Have a, 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 grand, a grandchild day or something. Get them all together and talk to them. Have communi you know, communicate. Mm -hmm and see what it is that they would like to do. And, and whether it, you could do Italian lessons, you could do tarantella dancing lessons, for example, boche lessons, for example. Um, those are just easy things, you know, off the top of my head, but there's so much more, really. There's so much more. Very, very well said. Well, Peter, I can't thank you enough for being on the podcast. I had a blast. I'm sure we could do many, many more in the future because there's so much to learn about I, Buffalo, federations running an italian festival st anthony's church so i look forward to having you on again i would love to be and we have so much more to delve into mm -hmm. as well there's mm -hmm. still a lot to be said yes. a lot more italian roots in buffalo and um and please forgive me uh famous italians out there <laughs> I, I know there's about 50 more that i that i just kind of missed, i know but... well yeah I mean, there's a day for them we'll, okay <laughs> we'll cover them one day but um everybody who is in the buffalo area i guess listening should 
look at what website for the Federation? F-I-A-S-W-N-Y, which is Federation of Italian American Societies of Western New York, but we also have a Facebook page. Awesome, perfect. So that'll be in the description. So anybody in Buffalo, and you can even message the Wooden Spoon Media on Instagram, or Facebook, or whatever, and I'll direct you that. But um, thanks for coming on. Awesome. Everybody else listening, make sure you're subscribing, following the podcast, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Ciao. Il piacere è mio, tutto mio. <laughs> Grazie.